Hey everybody, my name is Tyler Lay. In this video, we're gonna talk about bar spacing. Yeah, the spacing of the bars inside your concrete beam. It's actually really important to make sure that it gets built correctly. Imagine you've just poured a concrete column or a concrete beam. You actually pull the formwork off and you see this. <gasps> <laughs> what happened? What happened? Your bar spacing was wrong. Your bars were too close together and your concrete couldn't flow between them. You were almost there. You designed a column that was beautiful. You put forms around it. You put reinforcing in it. You poured beautiful, beautiful concrete in it. And this is what happened. I want to make sure this never happens to you. I want to make sure you over, always get your bar spacing correct so this doesn't happen. When you're laying out your bars in your reinforced concrete beam or column or any member that you're going to fill full of concrete, you have to make sure that the spacing between your bars has to be greater than one inch or the diameter of the bar or four thirds times the aggregate size. So what, how, how do I know what kind of aggregate they're going to be using when I make my beam or my column? And the aggregate size check is not that big of a deal because most quarries have a three quarter inch maximum aggregate size. Actually, I would say this is the most common size aggregate just for this reason. For example, if I have a three quarter inch maximum dollar aggregate size and I multiply that by four thirds, I will get one inch and this is already a limit that you're not supposed to go below. Therefore, if they make it at one inch, they're gonna be okay. So when we're laying out a beam, we need to make sure that we have enough width. Well, what do I mean by that? Width, that is the B. That's like this dimension down here at the bottom, the B, okay? We gotta make sure we got enough B, we got enough width, and we gotta make sure we don't have our bars too close together, okay? And we gotta make sure everything fits. Doesn't sound sexy, but it's still kind of fun to do. To do this, we need to account for the side cover, that's the cover on the side of the beam, the side cover, we have side cover here and side cover here. The stirrup diameter, we have a stirrup diameter here and stirrup diameter here. Something called the stirrup bend radius. What? And then something called the bar diameters. Yep, we know that. And then we have our bar spacing. You're like, bend radius? Bend radius? What's that all about? Why can't we just put our bar all the way over here in the corner? I'll show you. I've got a stirrup, a number four bar that's been bent to be a U. Yep, that's a U. I've got another bar. And if I try to put this bar over in the corner, it won't go. I can't put it in the corner. It won't go. Why is that? Well, if I look down here, this has got a certain radius to the bend. I can't get it all the way in the corner. And that is important to take into account. You have to know how people actually build things. And that radius right there is about two times the diameter of the stirrup. Yep, two times the diameter of that stirrup. That is what the bend radius is. Okay, back to it. Here's our layout. Let's do a little bit of math. Our total width of our beam, that's B, has to be equal to two times the cover, talked about cover, plus two times stirrup diameter, plus two times the bend radius, plus N minus one times the center 
to center spacing of the bars. And what's N? N is the number of longitudinal bars. Very cool. And also, I told you another secret. I told you the bend radius is actually equal to two times the stirrup diameter. This means I can simplify this equation. And I can simplify it to, this is pretty cool. Another thing you can use is you can just say whatever the value you get over here has to be less than our B. Because whatever minimum value you use over here, if it is less than the B, your width, then that means your layout is okay. That means if your stir center to center spacing is bigger than you assumed or thought it was, the minimum, you're gonna be okay. Another super useful design trick. You're like, okay, that sounds all right. I don't want honeycombing, but, but, but what if, what if I don't have sufficient space? What do I do? Well, if you just have a lot of longitudinal bars, and this will happen sometimes in like T-beams, um, you can actually place bars in layers. It's not ideal because you're actually decreasing your D a little bit and you'll decrease your capacity a little bit. But it's better than having a bunch of holes because your concrete can't be placed correctly. Or a bunch of concrete that's not around those bars. That would be awful. So it also requires a special stirrup, a double stirrup to tie that. But if that's what you need, baby, use it. That's what you got to have. Usually we want this spacing to be at least greater than one inch between these bars. You can also use bundled bars. Now, this only works for number 11 bars and smaller. They don't really have test data for bars larger than this. And you can treat um, bundled bars as a single big bar having an equivalent diameter that corresponds to the area of the bundle. There's a nice trick for you. For example, if I have three number eight bars that I, I wanna to bundle together, I can find their area and I can solve for what their effective diameter is. And I would use that in all of my checks and all my calculations. But remember, it's better to just not use layers or bundles unless you just have to. Hey, thanks everybody. I want to say a big thanks to Reza Hamza and also Nabimi. Thank you so much for your nice compliments. I really appreciate you. I love all, all of my watchers, but I especially love the ones that leave me comments. Thanks so much. Bless you, everybody. Take care. Bye.